Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes which is the forced proximity trope. I have three other recommendation videos. I'll link them all down below if you want even more recommendations, but I love the forced proximity trope. It's so fun. There are so many different tropes that can go along with the forced proximity trope. And I just love when two characters are like forced to be in like a confined space together and it helps them realize their feelings or admit their feelings, whatever the case may be. So I love these a lot and I hope that y'all do too. First one that I have is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. It was my favorite book of last year. I love this one so much. This one is about Wynne and Bo. They end up meeting at this Halloween party. They end up having this one night that is absolutely fantastic. Um, and Wynne ends up finding out that she's pregnant. And so Bo insists on being in Wynne and this baby's life, um, more in a platonic manner with Wynne because they don't want to complicate their relationship when this baby comes because they both want to be fantastic parents. You know what I mean? Um, so he decides to ask her to move in with him. More so demand because um, the place she's living in right now is like not good. So he's like, you have to move in with me. I'm not letting the mother of my child live in this dump, like come move in with me. I have an extra room. Come stay with me, please. It's the romance between the two of them while Wynne is pregnant and they're living in this house together and feelings happen, things get blurted out, like things are admitted. I love this book so stinking much. It has great disability representation. It's own voices for limb difference. Um, Wynne was born with a limb difference. She has a less developed hand as you can see right here. And then um, Bo had cancer and he got his leg amputated. So there is that representation as well. I love this one so much. I need more people to read it. Next is Truthfully Yours by Kaden Armstrong. This was a new release that came out, I believe in February of this year. This book starts out with our heroine and her best friend going to this kind of like Comic-Con situation. And they're watching this panel for a show that they really like. And one of the actors on the panel is saying some pretty ableist stuff. And the heroine is autistic herself and she is not for that. So she sticks up for her and her community. And then she kind of goes viral online, but not in a good way. People are bashing her online because she's basically dissing this guy on stage, this very famous actor, but he was totally in the wrong. Um, and the hero of the story is the um, actor's co-worker. So he's another actor on this show. And the whole time she was like dissing this actor guy in front of everybody at this comic con, he was like in his head, like, yeah, this girl's doing it. Yes, yes. Like he completely agrees with her. Um, he's always wondered like what happened to her after that. Well, it's a small world after all, okay? Because she ends up going on this uh, trip to Scotland where she's gonna help take care of this bookstore while the owner's on vacation. Guess who walks into the apartment one of her first nights there? but this actor guy. So she has to be roommates with this actor guy during the summer because his sister is the one who owns the bookstore. And he's like, I have nowhere else to stay right now. My sister's on vacation. She said I could stay here. So they end up having to become roommates. And yeah, he's a famous actor. She's this girl who um, the internet kind of like hates right now, which is very unfortunate, but there's a lot of other elements going on in here, but this was actually really fun. It is forced proximity because they have to be roommates. They don't know each other. And the way they meet is honestly also really funny, like how they actually like meet in person, like, hello, how are you? It doesn't start out that way. It's actually really funny. So I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I thought it was a great debut and I need more people to pick this one up as well. In the Weeds by BK Borson is my next one. This is the second book in the Love Light Farm series. This is the romance between Evie and Beckett. We met both these characters in book number one. Evie is kind of like the social media star, um, but she's not really in it anymore. She doesn't feel passionate about what she's doing. And the last place that she felt happy was going to Love Light Farms in this very small town. So she decides to go there. But there she bumps into Beckett, who is a guy that she had this hookup weekend with, I think about a year ago or a few months ago. And they kind of like just went off on their own way after that. Um, even though Beckett kind of wanted to like get her number, she kind of like ran away instead. Anyway, long story short, the two of them end up having to like live together too, because Beckett offers up the spare room in his house for her to stay in while she is staying at Lovelight Farms. There's nowhere else to really stay or is there? <laughs> I don't know. You have some like meddlesome townsfolk kind of like um, Stars Hollow. Like this this town gives me Stars Hollow vibes, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much is because I love all the people in Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls. I love this one and the tension was very high between these two. So it's kind of like second chance, kind of. The Co-op by Tara DeWitt is my next one. Both characters in this book inherited this duplex from their respective grandmothers. So both of their grandmothers owned part of this duplex and they got parts of it, you know what I mean? Um, but they don't really get along. They had this 
tryst in high school I want to say and it didn't end well <laughs> and they haven't really liked each other since. There is fantastic banter in here. They bicker, they banter, they get on each other's nerves and I think the only way the two of them can like get the estate is by marrying so I think it's also a marriage of convenience and they also have to fix up this house too so there's a lot of things going on in here they're sleeping in this house together that like has like no beds there's no rooms so um it's definitely an interesting read and I thoroughly love this one so if you've read Funny Feelings I definitely do also recommend you picking up the co-op and their animosity relationship definitely turns to lovers after a certain point so yeah the forced proximity part in here is that they live in this house that's like falling apart together. <laughs> I have a nanny romance for you. So this is Goal by Alexandria House. The forced proximity element is the fact that the heroine lives in this house with the hero and his younger siblings who she is nannying for. The hero is this famous hockey player and um, he ended up getting custody of his two younger siblings after his dad passed away and he's never met them before. He doesn't really have a relationship with them, but he's going to try everything to make their lives amazing. So he ends up hiring this nanny on his girlfriend's request. His girlfriend is like, I'm not taking care of any kids. Uh, you need a nanny. So he does that. He hires a nanny and there he meets our heroine and he is very attracted to her right from the beginning. So there's a little bit of a cheating element, but we don't really like his girlfriend. His girlfriend is very much giving gold digger vibes. So there's a lot of tension between the two and it is like a little forbidden because he's in a relationship. So if you would like a darker one, I have Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. Our heroine in here, her name's Beckett and she is a female pirate, pirate captain. And she is on the run from two men in this book. One is her husband and another one is a pirate hunter. Okay, oh, that's all I want to say. That's all I really want to say. Um, Cause I don't want to spoil this for anybody. I loved going into this book as blind as possible. There's like almost every single trigger warning you could possibly think of in here. Like there is sexual assault on page multiple times. So just please be aware of that. Please be aware of that. Um, and there's also other dark elements as well, but I love this one. There is forced proximity elements because most of the time these characters are stuck on a pirate ship together or stuck in the same room on a pirate ship together, which is even smaller. Like they're in the middle of the ocean. They have to be in the same proximity with one another. So Dangerous Duke by Scarlett Scott is my next one. This is book number three in her League of Duke series. The hero in here, his name is Griff and he is kind of in the dumps a little bit on watch with the League of Dukes, which are a group of Dukes that are also spies and work for the British government to like take down certain terrorists that are around the country, right? He's not doing too great because he did something he should not have in the last book. And he's kind of on watch and he's forced to stay under house arrest basically and another Duke's home who's in the League of Dukes. He's trying to figure out how to get out of this house. He's like, I don't want to be here. Get me out of here. So he devises up this plan to seduce the Duke's house that he's in. He has a younger sister and he's going to seduce the younger sister to help him escape the house and um, run away together, supposedly, make her fall in love with him, run away. Uh, but then he's just gonna leave her. He's like, I'm not gonna actually fall in love with her, no. But guess what happens? He falls in love with her, okay? Um, and then she realizes that all of it was basically a lie. And boy, is she pissed. She's pissed, so. Um, but yeah, this one's actually really fun. So the forced proximity element is obviously the fact that they're staying in her brother's house together. I have another one where both characters are stuck on a ship. This is The Viking She Would Have Married by Lucy Morris. This is Second Chance Romance. These two characters were like in love with each other years ago, but she ended up leaving without a word in the night one night and he was heartbroken. Absolutely heartbroken. Um, and he is this Viking like chief and um, she gets hired to be the shield maiden for this journey that he's going to be on because she needs money to help provide for her sisters and her mother um, because they're about to be like kicked out on the streets. They have no money. Anyway, it's their second chance romance and it is forced proximity because they're stuck on this Viking ship together for months, like uh, like months upon months. Grand Tour by Honey Phillips is a fun monster one. So this whole series is basically about these human women who have been kidnapped from a neighboring town on this planet and um, has been kidnapped by one of these alien brothers in arms. And they, he just gets wives for all of his brothers. He's like, here, you get a wife, you get a wife, I took a wife for you. And so um, his name's Benjar and he ends up kidnapping a girl in town who's like the town chef kind of, she owns a restaurant in town. And he ends up giving her to his brother, Frantor. <laughs> so Frantor, during a snowstorm one day, like here's a knock at his door and there's a human woman passed out on his doorstep. And he's like, huh? Um, Frantor is known as the like reclusive brother 
Um, he was injured in battle and he now has cybernetic limbs and scars and chronic pain and he is terrified of someone being terrified of the way he looks. So he keeps to himself. He doesn't venture out much. He doesn't socialize because he doesn't want to scare people. So when our heroine in here ends up waking up from being knocked on the head, essentially, um, she doesn't know where she is. And so Frantor tries to explain it to her, but within the shadows, he's like, please don't look at me. Please don't watch me. I don't want to be seen i don't want to be looked at so the two of them end up actually falling in love without seeing each other which was actually really sweet i really enjoyed this one um you have like a scarred hero who's an ultimate softy for the heroine the forced proximity element in here is the fact that they're stuck in his cabin for days weeks because of this horrible snowstorm and the last one that i have is servant to the spy day by ruby dixon this is a short monster romance novella you have um an f m m m romance um so these heroes are kind of like one being that has three bodies if that makes sense so you have um past present and future all have their own bodies and they're all like these spy day gods and the heroine has volunteered to be their anchor to serve them to serve them okay and so she's there for all three of them and they all live in this castle together so forced proximity they all live in this castle it's just a short fantasy romance novella that's really actually honestly fun anyways they have it those are some forced proximity romance recommendations for you let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a boat emoji in the comment section down below because a few of these actually took place on a boat so anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all